What are you doing to my brain? Okay, now we can start. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of what the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it's Black Swan before Black Swan came out. That's what this yeah. is. So this is obviously this is a retro review because this isn't new in theaters. Like when was this movie made? Like, Nineteen. In, it was ninety-seven or ninety-eight, but I think it's ninety-eight because they're saying you know twentieth anniversary. Yeah, there's some definite ways you can tell this is made in the nineties. <laughs> what? What is this Macintosh computer and interwebs? Yeah. When, <laughs> when there was a long sequence explaining what the internet is, it's kind of it like. Oh, man. And it had Netscape Navigator. Oh, did it? <laughs> I was waiting to pull up, like, the AOL, like, floppy disk out. The one you need to get actually fold into, like, a 4x4. I know. I just saw that. I was like, ow. Yeah, I know. Ow. I know, man. I remember the house! <laughs> yeah! I still have nightmares about the dial-up sound. <laughs> <laughs> so this is perfect blue, obviously. If you watch, if you watch the trailer, you know what this is. Uh, you know more about this than I do, so why don't you do the setup? So yeah, perfect blue is like. Uh, God, I can't remember if that was like Satoshi Kon's like first major movie, but that's like that was the movie that got him on the map. And Satoshi Kon's a very well. Uh, Satoshi Kon, yeah. Satoshi Kon, sorry, it's yeah. a very well. I'm assuming it's a very prolific. Japanese animator. Yeah, was, he did. He did a lot of major things. Like he did, uh, yeah, Perfect Blue, uh, Paranoia Agent, which is a really awesome series that I still need to watch more of. Like mm -hmm. it has a lot more of those psychological things. Uh, Tokyo Godfathers, Millennium Actress, uh, Paprika. Um, God, just. You know what I know? That's most does Tokyo Godfathers. <laughs> the one I've heard of, I think. Um, then again, like, it's one of those things. I, I have not hidden this fact. I'm not a big anime person. <laughs> And I know this because I get so much fucking shit for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not everything against it. It's never been an art style that's really appealed to me, except for the, some examples, like Miyazaki's an example. Uh, after watching this, I'd count this an example, too, because this is yeah. a really good movie. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, are you glad I told you about that editorial first? It it gave me some context, but I don't think it would have helped that. I don't think it would have made that much of a difference overall, because I still, I feel like I still would appreciate the editing either way. Yeah. It did add to my appreciation of it, of it. Uh, but I did like, again, I think, I don't think it would have been, it would have really messed with me if I didn't see it beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I can like it. Well, I mean, it's, I would say, well, it's easy to follow for like the half. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> then the second half happens. Like what is happening? <laughs> what is, Stop it! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, Inception, can you help me out here? It's it's like when Bioshock Infinite goes in the ending, you just want to go, hey, flick him in the ear, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Start making sense. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but what the hell? <laughs> but yeah, I saw this movie like 10 years ago. Um, oh god, maybe... By the way, if you're watching this review, we're assuming you've already seen the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I got the UMD on PSP. Oh man. Thankfully, I had the one that like <laughs> outputted on TV, so I was able to watch it on. Oh, there, but... UMD, so Sony. <laughs> you yeah. tried so hard. I remember watching Van Helsing on my PSP. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I had. I think I remember I had like I had that Paprika, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Nice. <laughs> I had some good movies for that thing. I did not. <laughs> I think I had whatever came free. Uh, you know what? A part of me wonders if I still have like my PSP shit somewhere. I played God of War on that. That was my that was my jam on the PSP back when that was the thing. Yeah. I will say that thing did make for a, a good little portable movie player though. Yeah, I always uh, oh dude, I had my portable DVD player at the time. That thing was bitching. <laughs> yeah. You like you could put your disc inside the little thingy and it just, yeah. and it played like your movie on like a on a ten by eight screen. It was great. Yeah. I mean, what I do is I mean like outboard on TV, but I, yeah, I, I, know, I, I know, I know. I digress. I digress. <laughs> no, I used to ha I used to watch those in the car all the time. I had like a one with like a five inch screen or something. Oh my like god, that. <laughs> PSP or portable DVD player? Portable DVD player. Did we used to be a PS2 in my old car back in the day? That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I played the shit out of some Kingdom Hearts of Spider Man while I was in, when I was <laughs> driving back home from Oregon. <laughs> Sorry, uh, back yeah, to we're, we're, we're just getting nostalgic at yeah, this point. Uh, wait, we're so appropriate. For How me. old am I? How old are you? <laughs> 
I don't know anymore! I mean, you're older than me, and I keep forgetting that. <laughs> it's like, no, I just... Oh, uh, God, I think it was like, okay, yeah, I think I just had my perfect blue moment. It's like, <laughs> ah! What is real? Um, no, back, back to the movie, though. No. Uh, like, I don't usually go for, like, Japanese dubs traditionally because I don't like to read. <laughs> which you mean I, subs? Oh, sorry, sub. dubs. Uh, yes, yeah. dubs. You're right. Uh, so like, uh, the, so it it does take a lot for me to go like, uh, you want me to like fully pay attention the entire time? <laughs> uh, fine. And I I do admit I was kind of like, all right, let's just go see this. I don't. I really knew nothing about it going into it other than what you told me about it. Yeah. Uh, so I went to this pretty blind. Out, uh, the only thing I had accidentally spoiled for me was in the editorial you showed me. And I was like, oh, that's the guy who dies. Uh, Which one? Oh, yeah. that The screenwriter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, I think that was fairly early on. It was, yeah. But, for, like, for those who are not aware, for some reason, if you're watching a movie, that's, that's a very niche movie. Um... Or at least very old enough that if you're watching this, you're watching this knowing what exactly we're talking about. More than likely, unless you're just really curious. But anyway, it's basically about a pop singer named, was it Mima? Yeah. Mima, who uh, wants who decides she wants to be an actress. So she starts doing this drama, this thing, this <laughs> ridiculously, almost kind of ridiculous, like, at least today it'd be ridiculous, like, over-the-top murder dr TV drama. Which was very, very clearly inspired by, uh... The Science of the Lambs. Amongst other things, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's more like, if it... it Especially like the opening lines are like, "Oh my god!" I feel like this is the like the kind of TV drama South Park creators would make because <laughs> like uh, he skins the victims a lot. He skins the victims uh, to become a woman. No, he wants like of women. It's like, but he wants to become a woman. <laughs> it's like I thought he got sexual stimulation out of it or something like that. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> Or was I, it later on when they make the Jody what's her name reference? <laughs> or did they make a Jody Foster yeah, reference? Yeah, they said it's like, oh, you'll be. It's like, it's like, no, this is great. You know, Jody what's her name got to start like this. Oh, I miss that. <laughs> I miss that line. Uh, uh, but over time, uh, there's this, there is this psychopath that is this. Uh, they, this was like the internet creep culture before it became mainstream. Uh, Thank you, Twitter. And, you know, <laughs> uh, well, also, based on the news earlier, thank you, Twitter. I know, right? You finally did something good, even though <laughs> you really tried hard not to. Uh, that's a whole other thing. I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure I'll read on Twitter later. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, by the way, thank you if you follow, started following us from Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, there's, there goes the last 20 subscribers ever. <laughs> anyway, so um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah. So while this is happening, the super creepy stalk like stalker guy who's obsessed with her uh, makes like a, which basically accumulates to like a blogspot post uh, website about her. Yeah, where she like, basically like where she basically just imperson impersonates her, and. Uh, they start sending out threats to the various like directors and screenwriters and actors, and pretty much anyone that's involved in this TV drama. Any, well, uh, anyone that's basically involved with how her quote, character is done in the yeah, show. Yeah, who quote unquote tarnishes her image. Yeah, uh, which is in no way relevant to today in any way, shape, or form. Because, I mean, 90s are crazy, right? We would never do that again. God. Yeah. If, if you can't read my obvious sarcasm, it's more like in ways the movie is dated. It's also like, well, this is shockingly topical. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they re-released it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's like... On that note, what do you think of the last Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> or, or like, what was the most ridiculous one I read recently of... <sighs> Of uh, this one, this one like killed me because I was re again. I, I'm I'm kind of stuck in the Twitter world now, so read all the bullshit. And the one that killed me was like, "Ugh, dude, the new Spider-Man game doesn't have the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man suit. Zero stars." I'm not fucking kidding. Was he? No. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> also. <laughs> And this is something that's also completely true. And I, there's probably like, are you fucking kidding me, people? Are you fucking kidding me? There's something called Puddlegate with the last... The, I heard about that. Was, yeah. What the hell? It, it's because they said, like, uh, there are, like, less puddles in the actual game than there were in the E3 trailer. Therefore, it's a downgrade. I'm not fucking kidding. I just thought maybe the puddles looked like shit. That's it? No, that was it. There was less puddles. People got pissed. 
It was so dumb. <laughs> uh, ironically enough, they're pissing so many puddles they can probably put them in the game. <laughs> uh, the point is, this is not the, like the point is. This movie's fucking prophetic, <laughs> as far as modern uh, big culture uh. goes. Uh, we don't like this change you made, therefore we're going to make everyone else's lives miserable. Uh, except the actual actress, oddly enough. There. Uh, <laughs> Until, well, outside of attempted murder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but actually, more, nowadays, more they just target the, act, the actor personally rather than anyone else involved. I'm sure there would be some of that, yeah. too. Um... Uh, it's like, yeah, this is more like a uh, John Lennon obsessed kind of person than. Yeah. Kill John Lennon. Oh, great. Now I'm yeah, thinking. John of Lennon's dead. Uh, oh. <laughs> that was a great episode screwing my book. <laughs> Oh God! Um, but yeah, but it's, uh, it's, as the movie keeps going on, Mima starts kind of going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs a bit, and she starts seeing like her idealized self everywhere, and she start she's starting to lose perception of what's reality and, and the what's not. Way they edit it together. Oh, just, the editing is fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's like the way that just she's it's constantly going back and forth between like the past and the present. Mm -hmm. Then it, things just get starting getting repetitive. The point where it's like wait. So did that happen before? Did it not? It's like that did, but that didn't. It's like yeah. Yeah. So I, that that's a, especially this just amps up during the climax. And again, the editing is honestly kind of the star of this movie for me, because the way it's set up and the way it's actually executed is like it's damn near flawless. I would argue in the way it builds up suspense, in the way like and kind of the way the editorial mentioned, like how it cuts away from the actual act of doing it and just, just the much just left imagination. But I love when movies do that. And also the way that like it juxtapose just like other mundane things that are happening yeah like it gets you to another point in the story while still kind of like you know kind of leaving the idea there it definitely does enough with the side stuff so that you it it shows enough little things that you notice when little things change yeah and uh, and you notice in the background and that comes into play largely at the very end uh when again mm -hmm. you you're just questioning reality more and more until you're just like, wait a minute. And then suddenly an umbrella comes in. I'm just thinking of the penguin. <laughs> Not giving much away. Because uh, I was thinking like, I just imagine the penguin in the background going like, I found my great love. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Wasn't that an actual animated series episode? <laughs> yeah, it was a lot more sophisticated than that one. Though. <laughs> <laughs> On that topic. Oh, God, have you seen the blue? For I've I have not seen it yet. They sh they just showed the remastered intro. It's like <laughs> I don't want to know what that face was. Um, is that why the jacket's over there, Crutch, right now? You may want to get the car detailed. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Every fucking time, Grant. Every fucking time. Indeed. <laughs> Last time it happened, you were jerking yourself off over mother. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. It was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bravo, good sir. Thank Bravo. You. Thank you. Uh. Oh, man. But no, like, uh, this is a... Like, it does take a little bit to get going, but, like, mm -hmm. once it does, it's in full... And, and kind of like Black Swan. Um... In the same way, you can definitely tell it has been a Darren Aronofsky. Yeah, uh, like I said, he actually owns the rights to like a live action Perfect Blue movie. Yeah, you can definitely see the influences that he took from this from this movie to that movie, and that was kind of interesting to watch as well. Um, and yeah, the best elements of this movie were taken and used in the Black Swan, just the surrealness of it mm -hmm. and the um, the almost unpredictability of it. Yeah, even uh, just like those themes of like you know what's reality, the idea of like you know kind of cracking under pressure, like trying to like be something you're not, and all that. Mm -hmm. And also, just like, it just goes to show, interview would be fucking crazy even back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, granted, internet's done a lot of good in that time too. To be fair, and I've met a lot of nice people on Twitter. To be fair, but the, all it takes is two fucking psychos to ruin it for everybody. <laughs> That's what it really kind of comes down to. I thought you would have said one, but <laughs> well, technically, there's two. <laughs> <laughs> Or three, if you want to really get technical yeah. about this. Yeah, schizophrenia is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if it exists, I don't know, there's, some, there's, uh, there's always oh, yeah. some trepidation. Illusions, that, yeah, illusions can't come to haunt you or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. It can't come to life or something like that. Either way. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, it was awesome seeing this movie on the big screen. 
Uh, yeah, and I just, that's for first time experience. I'm glad I did get to see it in the big screen. Yeah, like you saw it the way it was intended. Uh, the remaster, for the most part, looked really good, except for a couple odd moments. Yeah, but I think it's just because the way that it was originally mastered that there's only so much they could do. Yeah, I mean, they, like especially with like that's like, from the '90s and animated, no less. It's pr it's pretty hard to be able to do like remaster that to its yeah. fullest extent. I mean, that being said, the animation still holds up really well. Madhouse I'm, is a great. Uh, studio. They've done like a lot of awesome stuff. I mean, especially the use of lighting and cinematography is fucking beautiful mm -hmm. and haunting. Like there is a lot of haunting shots in this movie that play on the surrealness and play on the the tone and the themes and the the idea of corruption and all that stuff. It played it's, it's done expertly throughout the entire yeah. movie. Is the story perfect? I would argue not. Like there are a couple flaws of the actual story, but everything that like all the extra elements really do. Make it easy to overlook those flaws. Yeah, I would say. Uh, your yeah. thoughts? <laughs> As some would say, it's an imperfect masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, I would argue. Like again, it, a lot of comes down to just how it's presented. The presentation yeah. is amazing. Um, presentation can definitely do a lot sometimes. Yeah, and that definitely carries away some like, and it definitely has a plot twist. I was like, oh I, man, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. really should have. Uh, it's the point where it's like, like, it's one of those plot twists. Like, oh, I should have seen that coming, except I guess I wasn't looking for it. It's usually, what ends up happening. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the great things about this movie is like it does such a good job <sighs> with things that it's like a great misdirect. Um, at the same time, it feels believable, especially with, like, the way things are set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, um, <clears throat> like, you look at the breadcrumbs, I'm not sure if we should say exactly what it is, but... Um, uh, I mean, this movie is what? Like, yeah, that's true. It's 30 20 years old. Like, 20 years yeah. old? If you but, haven't yeah, seen it by that's, now. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> um, like I said, it's kind of a niche thing, also, to a certain degree. Yeah, so, yeah, as, as most people know, if you, if you haven't seen this movie yet, stop now. Yeah. Uh, the the female agent is the murderer. Yeah, uh, uh, Rumi. Rumi, which... And, who I'm guessing also killed the photographer and then framed me, Mima for it? Or did she imagine um, that the clothes were there? Like, what was going on with that? I think that could be the idea. Which because I, we also don't know. It's like, what if Mima was in that room? And not yeah, the one? that too. But then how would the paparazzi know how to get there? That is true. Um, but so, I mean, that is... it's It makes sense, though, considering Rumi's probably like her... The one who's kind of getting her to and fro a lot of the times too. Yeah, too, and I just have the. I guess we have to talk a little about the ambiguous ending, which yeah. I'm not really sure is that ambiguous. It kind when you, of. When you kind of stop and think about it, though, like kind of like for a minute when you realize, or it's like, okay, so the twist, the ending is, is that uh, Rumi was the one that did it, and it ends with her like in the psych ward, and. Uh, Mima doing her own, like uh, visiting her and then being the, mm -hmm. like being the big shot actress I guess she is now, and then she goes back into her car and then she says uh, what, what was it I'm real but it's yeah also I'm the I'm real th I'm the real thing but the thing is that she said it's being said with Rumi's voice actress yeah but uh, it's also kind of like well at this point they'd have her on ID no it's the idea is that is this still all being imagined is this just another thing that's <laughs> in her head that like she thinks that like. That's how she's separating herself from that personality. Perhaps. Yeah. It's an, uh, idea, an idea. Other idea, they're just kind of ironically playing on some weird thing of how, like, Mima's trying to get her own identity, but yet she's still. Okay, fair not enough. Quite I, can see, there. I can see I can get that interpretation. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to choose it's a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> the English dub did. <laughs> Because, yeah, uh. yeah, in the English dub, like I was telling you, basically, they, they use the same voice actor for Mima to deliver that line. Okay. Mm. So I mean, it is a very subtle change, but it makes a it can make a huge world of difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't say it's as good as the ending of Taxi Driver, yeah. which kind of did a similar thing. Yeah, that one was yeah, which was more or less an idea of like, like that one I would yeah. feel like uh, that all, one because oh, that sorry, one was more like a case of like that was all real, but was setting up things like could this continue again down the road? I don't know. There's been theories that that was all, that whole ending is a dream sequence too, because it does seem a little too happy considering everything that happened oh. up to that point. No, it was, that was, they talked about the one. That's not the case. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. shut me up then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, sorry, God. Because yeah, it was more of an idea, because they basically talked about the whole fact that like, it was just that ironic idea of like how, they're totally, they totally acknowledge that like, it was a whole thing of circumstance that saved him. Mm -hmm, yeah. And that idea, it's like, it is so strange how like, just that one moment can completely change the identity of someone or how they're viewed. Mm -hmm. And that, but that fact that it's like, 
no, deep down, he's still a disturbed individual. He probably will do it again. Yeah, fair enough. All right, fair. Uh, that's that's our review of Taxi Driver. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's a movie I want to see on the big screen someday. That'd be fun. Okay, uh, yeah. Just watching all its, like, grimy, gross, sticky glory. Oh, I'm still mad I didn't get a chance to see that when they played it at Cinequesto at some point. Oh, they're going to play it again at some point. Come on, yeah. it's a classic. It's going to pop up sooner or later. Yeah. Uh, just like the Transformers, the movie. <laughs> When does that air? Oh, uh, I think it's September 20th something, 25th? I might make a make for that. And I was like, I've never seen that. You're like, you know what I never do? Want to go watch Orson Welles' last movie? Yeah. <laughs> I want to watch Optimus Prime die. Yeah. <laughs> kind of horrifically. Yeah. <laughs> the the scene that still makes, like, actually, I think I actually watched like a Movie Bob episode talking about, like, just, uh, and it's really that good series. If you haven't watched it, you should go check it out. It's a really good uh, video essay. Um, and about just saying like, uh, yeah, this was meant to like make room for more toys and it backfired horribly because everyone cried <laughs> and there was this huge outcry to bring him back. <laughs> and it was like, so a movie that was meant to sell toys did too good of a job. <laughs> How ironic. I know. <laughs> But anyway, I can't really think of a whole lot else to talk about. Do you got anything? I'm um, not really. It's just, it's just. It's a still really solid movie. Yeah, you know, I just great psychological. You know, that is probably one of the truest definitions of psychological thriller. Um, just in terms of like De how there are definitely like, movies that have built on its sense. Yeah, I would say, but yeah, this is like, definitely like a good early precursor. Yeah, uh, just. Great, I mean, great, you know, great, interesting looks in these characters, great animation, uh, surprising, very good use of juxtaposition throughout, especially with, like, between, like, the horrific and some of the humorous elements. Like, which humorous elements? Like, the part where they're filming the rape scene, like, the quote-unquote rape oh, scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where they point out, it's like, guys, this is uncomfortable for us, too. <laughs> yeah. And, like, no, the funny part is, like, at first it starts off, they're just, like... Like the agents are just like watching, they're bored out of their minds. Or, yeah. Like, look, and they just see Rui with like this half smoked cigarette, just. <laughs> <laughs> or just the actors when they say cut, and they just have to awkwardly lie yeah, on top I'm of each other. So sorry. Yeah. Like, like, oh no, it's okay. <laughs> It's like, I haven't watched many uh, commentaries, but I did watch the commentary for 300, and Zack Snyder had a great one for the, when the sex scene pops up. And then you guys, like, guys, filming sex scenes is hard. It's. it's <laughs> It's awkward for everybody. Nobody's happy. <laughs> Everyone just wants to get it done and move on. <laughs> so, that kind of put a whole new perspective on that afterwards. Oh, God. What was the one about um, uh, Game of Thrones between... Uh, oh, God. Uh, all I remember is da Daenerys Targaryen and Cal Drogo. Um, how do I forget the actors' names? Jason Momoa. Yeah, Jason and, Momoa uh, and uh, Clark. Uh, something. Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark. Yeah. How, like, that was super uncomfortable for her. So basically, to help ease her into it, Momoa put a sock puppet down there. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you gotta do. And it worked. Yeah. Uh, it's like, what? It's, you, hear, you hear the story about uh, Chris, Pr uh, Chris Pratt and uh, Parks and Rec. In the first season, there is a scene where uh, he was like, uh, "Oh fuck, what's her name?" Uh, Aubrey Plaza or Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler, thank you. Uh, it's supposed to open the door, and he's supposed to be sitting on there naked. And apparently, he decided just to fuck with her. He did the he just really did it naked, <laughs> and that's the shot they used. I mean, I'm just going. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Granted, it was definitely kind of a sexual harassment thing. They guess like, don't ever do that again. Yeah. <laughs> so they told him. But at the same time, I was like, well, how the fuck it fucking works. <laughs> uh, listen, I think it's a shot they use. I don't know if it is or not, but either way, I know he got a very stern talking to after that. <laughs> uh, and also the best, he also came the best line. I don't think they actually used for the show. Ah. The, 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 the uh, come on her back thing. There was a sign where it was like, uh, like, can you, can you give me someone who's actually never, like had a really good comeback? And then Chris Pratt goes, Kim Kardashian. He goes like, she's still really popular. He's like, why? She always has come on her back. <laughs> Look it up. It's a great blooper because immediately, like, Nick Offerman's in the back. And he's like. <laughs> 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 nice. 
Nice. <laughs> like there's a long pause and Aaron just bursts out laughing. It's great. Uh, but yeah, that was that was perfect blue. <laughs> uh, anything else? Uh, I really hope this comes out on Blu-ray soon because it's not already. No, that was the. That's why I was so excited about this because like mm -hmm. it's only been on DVD with a really kind of subpar transfer, mm. and it was only in English. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I can see. So it's like, please. So, um, yeah, I think that's all I got personally. Uh, tomorrow, me and Howard are gonna go see Searching. Yeah, I was always getting like ridiculously good reviews. Yeah. I knew it was gonna do pretty well. Really, you think so? I, I yeah. thought it was gonna suck. This is a case where I'm gonna have to eat my words pretty hard. Yeah, I guess. Uh, oh, just like the Twenty One Jump Street movies. Well, uh, technically just 22, because 21, after that you saw 21, so you're a bit more open-minded about it. Well, I saw 22 first. That's what I said. Yeah, so by like, the time I was like, all right, all right, fine, oh, fuck not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, other than that, uh, if there's no other videos between now and next week, just keep in mind, because I'm working on a project right now, and I'm going to be working my ass off on it for the next week, trying to get out as soon as possible, so look out mm -hmm. for that. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching. See you later.